Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In some ways, I think it's good that our first day back is uh, this Ash Wednesday. To approach God, to really pray, we need to approach him with a humble and contrite heart. Right? And you'll notice every time when we are at the Mass, one of the first things we do is we pray the Confiteor, or even we pray it twice. The priest says it, and then the server, and you join in. And that is coming to the God, it's teaching us to come to God, we need to be humble, and we need to have a contrite heart. We need to be sorry for our sins in order to be able to enter into prayer. If we approach God with pride, if we approach God with self-righteousness, he, he, he will not listen to us, right? He won't listen to our prayer. He'll hear it, but he won't listen to it. To approach God, we need humility and contrition. And in many ways, that's kind of the spirit of Lent. In Lent at this time, teaching us to be humble and to repent, to turn away from our sins. Near the beginning of the Mass, we had the, the, uh, the ashes, right? This is Ash Wednesday. It signified mainly for many people um, marked by the signing of the ashes. And for us, as you know, like the custom in North America generally is to trace the sign of the cross over, over the forehead. And uh, that's what we're used to and that's what we've done. This year, we were instructed to sprinkle the ashes on top of the head. And I've tried to read more about this, but it seems to be uh, an, an, an older custom, and it is the custom of the city of Rome. It's the Pope's custom in, in the city of Rome that you would sprinkle ashes on top. And, and, and for us, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything, but maybe this year something to focus on is kind of the humility of receiving the ashes on top of your head, right? That uh, no one else will even see as you're walking away. There's kind of like I'm not drawing attention to myself in a, in a way that like will, uh, other people will think great of me or know that I was at Ash Wednesday Mass or anything. It's kind of maybe a little bit more humble. I know the ashes on the forehead for many of you in your place of work, it's not like a sign of, wow, you're so awesome, you're great, uh, um, but it's something that maybe is, is a sign of persecution, right? Like, or other people, they don't understand, or they may, um, they may make light of it in, 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 in different ways. But, uh, and maybe that is an argument to be made for making the sign right on the forehead. But at any rate, this year, a great lesson in humility and contrition before God. In, uh, in the Old Testament, in, in Nehemiah, this is what it, what it says. It says, Now, on the 24th day of this month, the people of Israel were assembled with fasting and in sackcloth, and the, with the earth upon their heads. So even in terms of scripture, there's images of putting the earth or ashes on top of your head, putting it on your head. For us, this time of Lent is such an important time as we follow Christ into the desert. We remember those 40 days before he began his public ministry, how he went to pray and to fast. And we know when he shows us that prayer is, 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 is really important and it's even more powerful when we unite it to fasting and sacrifice. For us, we are preparing, as Christ was pre preparing for his ministry and eventually for his passion, death, and resurrection, we are, we are preparing for those things too. And, and we're preparing for things in our own lives that God is looking to work as well. For us, we follow the same path. We, hear, we heed St. John the Baptist, repent, and then follow Christ into the desert to pray and to fast. And Christ, who did he meet in the desert? Who? We, we know, right? That he was tempted greatly in the desert. For us too, if we're trying to make this a really great Lent, we can expect to be tempted. We can expect to be tempted many times over these 40 days. For us, nevertheless, we see that as an opportunity to grow spiritually, to be more fortified in our faith, in our desire, in our commitment, our faithfulness to God. Now, in the gospel, Christ warns us. He gives us a really important warning, and that is to be careful in Lent about vainglory. Vainglory meaning like excessive vanity or inordinate pride. Vanity and pride. And this can happen, right? This can happen during Lent as we maybe get puff ourselves up about the, all the great desires we have for this season and the great things that we want to do, even good things for the glory of God. But yet ourselves, it, it can have actually a negative effect. 
And one of the ways that this can express itself is, uh, is as Jesus says in the gospel, right? Um, make sure that the things that you do, do it so your heavenly Father who is in secret sees it, and he will reward you. But if you do it so that others see it, and they compliment you and, say, and think great things about you and, and all that stuff, then you've already received your reward. You get nothing from the Father, right? Uh, but our Lord, like Christ, encourages us to do it in secret so your heavenly Father will see you. Again, there's a value to witnessing to the faith and all of that. But, but listen carefully to these words of Christ because he says them for a reason. Do things in secret so your Father will see it. I have asked some of you, and I will ask more throughout this time, what are you doing for Lent? It's a common thing. Many others, maybe in your family and other people, what are you doing for Lent, right? You gotta say something. You can't just say, well, I'm just gonna keep it secret. So what I wanna ask you to do maybe this Lent is to have like your official one, right? And, and you can tell people, and even sometimes it's good, I, I like asking because it's inspiring, right? You think, oh, well, maybe that's something I could do this year or in the future, it's inspiring. So to have one like your formal one, right? Like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pray the rosary every day, right? Maybe if we're not, or I'm giving up some kind of thing like for food, or I'm not gonna eat uh, like meat and I'm gonna fast on Fridays. I'm gonna try to do that really well this year or whatever it is that, that your plan is for Lent. Like, just have one that you use as kind of your formal one. Whenever anyone asks, that's the one that you'll tell them. But then also to have another one, right? Have another one that you don't tell anyone about. You don't tell anyone, but you only tell your Heavenly Father, and you do it for Him, and He sees in secret, and He will reward you in secret. If I ask you, you should tell me, right? I'm your priest. <laughs> I'm your spiritual father. Um, you, you can tell me, and maybe you have to tell your spouse, like if it's, yeah, if they're making supper for you and you're like making this commitment not to eat supper for certain days during Lent, and if they don't know that, they might get offended or think there's something wrong. Like, yeah, there may be times when you have to tell someone, but generally, right? Try to do something that you can keep in secret that only your heavenly father will see. There, I've, there's this awesome quote from St. Basil. If I haven't hit it home enough about like vanity and pride, listen to what he says because it's really, really good. He says, let us, let us fly from vainglory. Let's like run away from it, fly away from it. The insinuating spoiler of good works, right? Vanity, pride, it spoils everything that's good, right? It just, it spoils it, it messes it up. He calls it the, the pleasant enemy of our souls, right? A pleasant enemy. It's one that we kind of like, right? When other people notice us, compliment us, when, 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 they, when it builds up our reputation, all these things, like, we kind of like that. It's, but it's, he calls it the pleasant enemy of our souls. He calls it the moth of our virtues. It's like a moth that gets in there and just starts eating away at it, right? And it, like, wrecking it. And maybe even if you leave it long enough, it'll just eat up all your virtues. He calls it the flattering ruin of our good things, and often, yeah, like it can be flattering, right, when people say nice things about us, but it ruins our good works. He's, he goes on, right, he goes on for quite a bit. Who colors the poison with the honeyed mixture of her deceit. Covers herself, which is like this pride vanity is poison, but covers it um, and, and is with honey and is able to deceive us. Who holds out to the souls of men her deadly cup. And I think she does this that men may the more greedily drink her down and never be satiated with her. And we know, right, like these things, they don't fill us, right? Someone says something, whatever, maybe that feeling, it lasts for a little bit, but then we want more and more and more. And, and for us, it's our faith that we notice. When we, when we delve into that, those, those sentiments, those, those things, it fills us more and it stays around much, much longer. And then finally, he says, how sweet a thing is human glory to those who have not who have not had experience of it. So for those who maybe haven't experienced kind of those compliments or those things, it can, you can very easily just be taken by it and, and get lost in pride and vanity. A big point, and Christ makes this point in the gospel today, be careful about vanity and about pride, especially as we're entering into this holy season of Lent. For us, I hope, right, that this time is a time where we are turning away from our sins, where we're repenting. The ashes are a sign of true repentance and sorrow for our sins. We don't want that. We don't want to do it in our lives, and we're going to try even harder in these 40 days to root it out, to focus on those key areas and try to make some real progress in, our, in, each, in each of our lives. 
And as we do so, we look to, in a special way, those three uh, great things to do during Lent that, are, that our Lord speaks of today, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, right? Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, with almsgiving, charity, service, generosity, all of those things, they're a great help to us. And so this Lent, let us strive for many great things and many great desires, but seek them through prayer, fasting, almsgiving, in humility and with contrition and with seeking to please our Father in heaven who sees what we do and will reward us if we do it quietly and humbly. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.